We bless the Lord for this evening. We thank Him for guiding us once again in His presence. We will not take Him for granted for giving us opportunity to worship because He is a good God. Tonight, by Spirit, we're going to lift Him up because He deserves all the glory. Father, we thank You for calling us your own. We thank you for giving us opportunity to gather in your presence and to lift up our hearts in worship. We look on to you tonight for songs to render unto you. We ask that as our hearts are lifted up, let your glory fill this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Some are in their various homes. Some are on the way. Some are driving. Wherever the people are gathered, Father, connect their hearts to you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. From this worship tonight, let there be healing. Amen. Let there be salvation. Amen. Let there be deliverance. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sending your shepherd to bring the word to us tonight. As your word comes forth, let our hearts be prepared. Amen. Anoint him in a very special way so that your word will bring healing to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you deserve the glory. You deserve the worship. Without you, we are nothing. You are the one that makes us to be alive. You are the reason why we are gathered here. Let your name be highly exalted. Be glorified. Be exalted. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we worship you tonight. Father, there's no better place to be but in your presence. There's no better place to receive peace but in your presence. That's why we say, Almighty God, I just want to be where you are. Yeah. 
hopelessness. Every other place there's no help. Every other place there's emptiness. Every other place there's no security. Only in Christ, in His presence, is security. In Him is our help. In Him is our hope. In Him is our salvation and deliverance. In Him is our healing from every form of sickness, even coronavirus. It is through Christ we have the grace to be made whole. Father, we bless you tonight, O oh God. Remove us from the presence of emptiness. Remove us from the presence of failure. Remove us from the presence of this world. And plant us in the presence of your goodness and your mercy. Father Lord, there's no God like you, O Lord. Somebody let me worship this God. The one who has planted us in grace. The one who has removed us from this grace. The one who has shown us mercy. The one who has shown us to be his people. Father, we bless you, O God. Bless you, O God. We bless you, O God. We bless you, O God. You are our strength and our song. You are our strength, our song. You are our hope and our inspiration. You are the answer to the problem of the world. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord.
We acknowledge you, our God and our Lord, as the only true one. We thank you for the breath of our lives. We thank you for the way you protect us. We thank you for all the provision you give to us according to your providence. We thank you for your covenant with us. The covenant that you keep for us. We thank you for being alive to see today. For you have established every day for your will to be done. Mm -hmm. We thank you for our past, for our present, for our future. They are secure in your hands. We thank you for who we are. We thank you for who we are not. We thank you for your eternal life. All planned in Christ. We thank you most especially for your kingdom that has come in the Holy Spirit. Pouring him out to be our enabler of all that you are teaching. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit as a true preacher. The one to guide us to the heart of the Father. This is your era. It's your dispensation. Thank you for the planting of your church that the gates of hell will not stand against. Amen. Thank you for making us members of that church. Amen. And you being our head. Hallelujah. We thank you for the people that have lived and gone. And thank you for the remnant that are left still walking and doing your will. For those who do not know you, we commit them into your hands that you reveal yourself to them. Amen. For those who already know you, we ask that you justify them in faith. Amen. Let unbelief be counseled in our lives. Amen. Let the power of the gospel advance Amen. as you have already said it. Amen. Let your name be honored. Amen. We ask, Lord God Almighty, for your help concerning coronavirus, the pandemic ravaging the world, we ask that you come and help us out. Amen. We commit the frontliners in this battle into your hands, our medical workers. We ask that you protect them. Amen. We ask that you provide for them Amen. to battle against Satan. For the battle is yours, the victory is ours. Yes, we pray that you comfort those that have lost their loved ones. Yes. We also ask, Lord God Almighty, that the people that have been infected, you will heal. Amen. Amen. Home and abroad, yes, everywhere. Yes. For nobody has been given to Satan. All people belong to you. Yes. Prevail over the power of Satan. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We also ask, Lord God Almighty, that you give wisdom to the government of the world to know how to go in the administration of your grace concerning this pandemic. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May they hear you. Amen. Even those that don't belong to you, prevail. Let us hear you and do your way. Amen. You rule the people in the light and you rule the people in darkness. For you use darkness even as canopy. We thank you, thank you for being our light and our lives. Amen. Take full control of the time of hearing this message. Amen. Let it bless the hearers. Amen. Let it bring your will to pass. Amen. We bless you and honor you, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Greetings to every one of you, home and abroad, our friends online right now. We salute you and pray God's grace and mercy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord has been speaking to us concerning operating in relationship with him from the heart. And uh, the message tonight is still not different but in line with what he has been saying. The title of the message is Obey the Gospel of Repentance. The Gospel of Repentance. Obey the Gospel of Repentance. That word is scarcely used 
these days. Repentance. Instead of hearing repentance, I don't know about you, I hear more about apologies. I'm sorry. The gospel we preach, which is called good news, based on what Jesus came to do to clear people from sins so that they can live the righteous life that God requires is gospel because of the need to repent and then the spirit of Jesus taking over the lives of people belonging to God. Without repentance, there is no benefiting from grace and from mercy. Mm -hmm. That word repentance was the main word in preaching of God's message in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Taking the prophet Jeremiah as an example, in chapter 3 of Jeremiah, the prophet was sent to speak to Israel to repent of their sins and come back to their God. That their sin was the, was the problem bringing them down. It wasn't that God was bringing them down. Let's see it in Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. In the Old Testament, that prophet was sent from verse 8 to 15. Prophet Jeremiah was given a message of repentance. In 3, the third chapter, verses 8 to 15. Please, can you run with it, broadcaster? I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. I'm sure you know nobody has sex with stone and wood. So what that means is that adultery here means unfaithfulness. Israel is unfaithful to their faithful God. And it does not make sense to God to keep being faithful to unfaithful people, so he's calling them to repentance. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. The COVID-19 pandemic is a call of God for everybody to repent. Not everybody to say, I'm sorry. Not for everybody to make excuses for sin. Sometimes things happen, but relationally, we miss the mark on how to respond to what has happened. Our God is a holy God. And he wants his people to be holy as he is holy. And if his people do not repent from unholiness, they can never be holy. It is the spirit of God that quickens repentance. It is not what a man can do. If a man repents without the spirit, that is a pretentious repentance. And that is what happens to the people of this world that are not in the kingdom of God. Their repentances are pretentious, plastic, fake, not true. God is calling us to obey the gospel of repenting from our sins so that we can enjoy his righteousness. Hallelujah. He's presenting his righteousness in his son, Jesus Christ, and he's saying, look at me, all of you, you are all my sons, male and female. I am doing a new thing. I am in the era of the Holy Ghost. And in this era of the Holy Ghost, he is going to help you to think about your ways and then bring those ways for me to reform. Mm -hmm. What verse? Verse 10. In spite of all this, 
Her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense. Only in pretense. Repentance is coming to the Lord with all your heart and not in pretense. Are you saying that Christianity more and more is a heart journey? It's not a physical journey. It's a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go, proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. All right. That is what God is saying. He's saying that he wants to lead us in understanding, and he will give somebody he has given that grace of understanding to, to lead the people he has already assigned to bring them to him. Nobody is called of God to bring people to self. Any leader in the kingdom of God must be a spiritual director. Directing the people God made to God who can care for them. If you are under a leader, who talks about what he can do and the kind of anointing he has, you are being misled. It doesn't matter how your anointing is and the measure. It is God, by his spirit, that quickens people to repentance. And one of the ways God had designed repentance is through preaching. When you hear the word of God, the spirit of God brings about conviction concerning sin and righteousness. Uncountable times, people have said, Pastor, you were preaching against me. You were preaching in my favor. You were preaching this. I don't know when they will know that I don't go around hiring spies to find out what people are doing. <laughs> but the spirit that is helping me to preach this message is the spirit of God that knows you and knows me. A lot of the times, exactly how you feel the need for repentance is how I feel the need for repentance. So repentance is a gospel, it's not bad news. Hallelujah. It's good news. It is something we must embrace and then appreciate God. Thank Him for it. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. The writer of Proverbs in chapter 28, verse 13, he says this. You can check it out. He says, whoever conceals his sins shall not prosper or do not prosper. But whoever repents from his sins shall find mercy. People who don't repent from their sins, they conceal it. And as long as you conceal sin, you don't prosper as God knows prosperity. But remember, there is a deceptive prosperity, mm -hmm. which is a materialistic prosperity, yeah. a physical prosperity, a worldly prosperity. You can prosper according to the standard of this world, but the Lord says his own prosperity is different because it is a spiritual prosperity. And in this spiritual prosperity, he is saying, I will let my spirit convict you that your ways are wrong and my ways are right. Isaiah says it further in the teaching, in his prophecy. He said the ways of the Lord and the ways of men are not true. As, he said, God says, as your ways, as my ways are higher than, my ways are higher than yours, so is everything about me so distant? It's no, you cannot even, unless you have not met with God, that's when you will think that God is like the world. 
So God is saying that in his kingdom, it is very vital for people to repent so that they can be refreshed. Without repentance, there is no refreshing by the Spirit. The reason COVID-19 is coming as a distress at this time is because we have accumulated our sins and not repented from them over time. So God is calling his people, both sinners and faithfuls, to repentance. And I'm going to show you why. Because some people think they don't need to repent. And that is the reason you are deceived. Because repentance is for everybody. From leaders to the led. The only person that has never repented for anything is Jesus Christ because he never sinned. Are you with me? These are hard issues. So. These are hard issues. One of the things that bother me as a preacher is hearing messages that are not based on what Jesus preached. For example, people are preaching these days that in order for you to be known with good testimony of prosperity, you must have a replay. You must have so much. You must have this many. You must have this muchness. This muchness and manyness, they are not written in scripture. And these people are commanding crowd. Crowd are following them. Is it not a fulfillment of scripture that many shall be on the wrong road, on the wide road to hell, and few shall be on the narrow road to heaven? Are you on the wide road or on the narrow road? Your repentance will let you know where you are. Yeah. Or lack of repentance. Mm -hmm. People on the narrow road to heaven, they repent of their sins because they see it as opportunity of grace to be corrected. Yeah. It's been done for us. So we live by grace. And since we live by grace, we must apply faith. We must believe. In what Jesus had done for us. Now, I looked at the scriptures. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, he preached repentance. He said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. In the same Matthew chapter 4, after the temptation of Jesus, Jesus was called into the same doctrine and message to preach the message of repentance. He preached exactly what John the Baptist preached. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand or near. What's going on here? The same message Jeremiah just preached. John the Baptist preached. Jesus preached. The early church preached. When the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, go and look at the message of Peter, the apostle. He preached the message of repentance. So that a, a time of refreshing will come and the Holy Spirit be given to the people. If John preached repentance, Jeremiah preached repentance, Jesus preached repentance, my concern is, why is repentance not being preached in today's church? That all we preach now is testimony of prosperity and a lot of this have made a lot of problems to be in this world. Because the church is supposed to be light to the nations. Big indictment. We don't hear repent again. What we are hearing everywhere is so. You saw this, you get this. Prosperity messages. Deceptive type. Because there is prosperity in the kingdom of God. And it is true prosperity, not fake. What is that prosperity? That prosperity is spiritual, it is eternal, and is given by God to people who repent from their sins. God will never exalt a sinner. He is holy. And people who believe in him must be holy as he's holy. Peter says it in chapter 1. 
Since we are called into holiness, and God understands that it's only through the Holy Spirit we can be made holy, not through rules of the law. So whoever is going to enjoy God must be somebody penitent, which is somebody that repents from his ways. Now, what is repentance? Are you listening? Yes. yes. Repentance is a change of heart, of mind, of actions, of attitude from sin to God. An inward change that you can see outwardly. It's not physical. A change that does not make excuses for sin. The reason I did it. The reason you did it is already known. By God and all that know God, all of us. It's because we are sinful and God doesn't want it again. He doesn't want us to be sinful. So God has changed that reason to a new reason. And that is, instead of telling us why you sinned, please, tell us why you will not sin again. Because the Spirit is your helper. How many times are you going to be sorry for one thing? You keep saying, I'm sorry, and you find out that you are not sorry. That you keep doing it, you keep doing it. Because the Spirit of God is not helping you, and you are seeing the frailties of man. Jesus is concerned about this message. God is concerned about this message. And the distress of COVID-19 is coming because of this message. That people need to come back to repentance. Without repentance, there is no gospel, no good news. At all. You repent to prosper in Christ. You don't repent, he says you shall prosper. Whoever conceals his sin shall not prosper. Says the word. Proverbs 28, 18. You don't toy with that. As we are listening now, now, how are you supposed to go about it as you are listening? You know, the, the Spirit of God is the one that will convict you. Now, what will the Spirit of God do? This is, this is how repentance takes place. The Spirit of God will help you reveal your ways in order to return to your God. Hmm. Hmm. You can't repent if you have not thought about it. Hmm. Hmm. All the repentance is a lot of people do. They don't even think about it. They are very quick so that the matter is not extended. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, you don't do that. I never tell you I'm sorry. What did they do you? That's a defense of sin. Apologies for sin. The church is dying because they are no longer set up to tell people to repent. Yes. They are telling everybody it is well when it's not well. Mm. Not Cornerstone Church, you. By God's grace, as long as I'm a preacher. Because what I have been taught, not only in school, by the Spirit, is that without repentance, there's no forgiveness of sin. Yeah. And when your sin is not forgiven, you are not blessed. Mm. And in order for you to be blessed, you must repent. Mm. Nobody can escape this method. That's the only way of God. It's a gospel of repentance. It's a good news. To accept to repent is a good news. Because God has provided the avenue through which you can repent. And you don't need at all to feel the guilt or condemnation of what you did wrong. Mm. That's what Jesus did for us. Just repent. What did I say? Just, Just repent. repent. What a beautiful covenant. Mm -hmm. So lovely. What did I say about repenting? You reveal your ways and return to your God. Mm -hmm. The way he wants you. If you don't review your ways, repentance can't be complete. It can't be right. It's not true repentance. You know, I, I talked about how I was living before I submitted to God. I don't like submitting to who I don't know. 
Some people submit to the God they don't know. They call his name, but the God does not know them. It's one thing to know God and ask yourself, does he know me? Because you can know who does not know you. Do you understand me? Yeah. Uh, if you're going to walk with God, who is he? If God is holy, am I holy? Mm. Of course not. I am not. So am I going to walk with holy God when I'm unholy? It's not a problem, says the Lord. I've given you grace in my son to make you a son. Mm. What he did on the cross at Calvary is a place where people receive mercy, which is forgiveness of sins. So your sin cannot hinder you. You are hindered for not repenting from your sin. So what do I do? It's a short review. I need to come back to God and give up my ways because his ways are not mine. Mm -hmm. Of course, mine can't be his. That's right. So simple. Listen, when somebody is the one telling you to stop fornicating, commit and stop committing adultery, you are not a Christian yet. Mm -hmm. Because a Christian must know that those are not ways of God. There are issues that are already established. No need to go back and review them. You march on from such platform. You march on. Because they are already settled. It's a fool who keeps confessing sin without repenting. Some people are good at confession. I have something to tell you. Please. Uh, Richie, uh, I... Yesterday I sinned against you. Mm -hmm. Those things, they don't make somebody grow as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And some churches are set up for that, mm -hmm. especially legalistic churches. Yes. When you sin in some churches, they will make you come to the front of the church and confess your sin. Mm -hmm. It's against the Bible. Nowhere Jesus did that. In the early church, they said we should cover sin. They didn't say we should expose sins of brothers. And if anybody is caught sinning, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, they say it should be restored, it should be restored gently, yeah. gently. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6, 1. Restored gently. Not make sure he's short for escaping death. <laughs> restored gently. But what do we do today? Somebody that God wants to rescue from sin, we disgrace the person by making him confess to people. Sin that is already a shame, we bring the person to public shame. Mm -hmm. Instead of delivering the person from shame and guilt. I don't have time, I don't say in such churches. Why? Because they are not biblical. They are not where God says you should stay. Who does not say that they will bring one person out as they brought the woman caught in adultery out? They didn't bring the husband. Some churches are still doing that. The person that leads repentance is the leader of the house. In my family, I lead repentance. In Cornerstone, I lead repentance. Father, like Nehemiah, like the leaders of old, even new, like Jesus is the only one that had never done that. Why? He can't lie by saying he sinned when he did his sin. Mm -hmm. mm. Which some people still do. Mm -hmm. One person lied in his testimony that he has been living in a poultry. <laughs> and somebody who knows him and they have been living together, I say, this man is lying. <laughs> Why must you pay something bad for God to look good? See all the different ways we try to mock this faith? Yeah. Hey, Becky, I, I sinned against you. When you travel, I slept with somebody in the church. Please, forgive me. That's not repentance. <laughs> That's really <laughs> full, exactly. <laughs> Come on, tap it, too. It's really full. Do you know if that is done, that you slept with somebody, and beg is not around, by God's grace, I don't think it can be my portion because God is helping me to, with such things. I can't pass that way again because there's a roadblock for me there. Hallelujah. If you don't have roadblock in your life, every road is takeable. You are a fool. Yes. It's a roadblock. How can I be seen in adultery when I did it in the world before I became born again? If you have not had a few days of that, you can't repent that is wrong. <laughs> yeah, people will still be telling you, ah, you have to think about it. If adultery is not good, why what of masturbation? Only your will. <laughs> your head is not correct because masturbation is immorality and sexual immorality in any form. <laughs> God hates immorality. Whether it's financial or sexual. 
So Peggy will just say, okay, as pastor, I forgive you. And then only again for me to do it again because I didn't repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I only wanted to escape the shame of the action. And only Jesus can forgive claims and justify anybody's faith. Hallelujah. Repentance for all, for all, for all. Mm -hmm. From leaders to the led. Everybody needs to repent. Hallelujah. Don't you know you are the one that knows yourself best? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Apart from God? Yes. So, in repentance, you go to God, not man. It's a turn back to God. That Father, look at what I've done. And they are very different from what you told me to do. Whatever it is, forgive me. Look at the blood Jesus shed for me. Look at the finished work at Calvary. Cleanse me. I plead your blood over my life. The blood Jesus sacrificed for me. Accept my sacrifice. Forgive me. Repentance cannot take place if there is no godly sorrow. It is godly sorrow that prompts repentance. It means you come back to God. When you have a worldly sorrow, your statement will always be what we people say. If they hear this, he has done. And that's what is in the heart of many people. There are so many worldly Christians and worldly church. And what will people say? I don't give a damn what people want to say. They don't keep my score in eternal life. It's God who sees me. It's God who knows me. It's God that keeps my score. If you want to prosper with God, repent from your sins. That's what Jesus said. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Why did they say it's near? Because it has not come. The kingdom of God came when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Hmm. Because the helper of people to now repent has come. But in the time of Jesus, in the time of John the Baptist, it was at hand. Can you read it, please? Let's clarify it. Let's see some clarification so that we know what we are doing as Christians. God has been bringing some things out for us to correct. In Jesus' name, may you correct it. Amen. And march on in power and glory. Amen. Matthew 3, chapter 3, verse 1. All right. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Beautiful. Matthew 4, 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. Jesus also. What did he preach? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. It's near. What are we preaching today in our churches? Why is there no more repentance in our messages? You see somebody who stole, who stole money from government. He came to your church. And you know that this is a thief. What was your message? You know what the John the Baptist told Herod? He said, return your brother's wife. Simple. Some of us, we know a thief. We will tell you the thief he shall be well with you. That you are a great man. Not me. Not me. Why? Because the reason God called me is the same reason he called every person. To repent and be blessed. Excuse me, who are you? Why should we be praising thieves and robbers? Why should we have pastors these days? All they talk about is the things they have acquired. Materialistic messages. And the message of Jesus Christ is a spiritual message. It is eternal message. That's why the church is making excuses for all the things that are wrong now. We need to wake up and repent, every one of us. This is not a message that is popular, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Even God himself is not popular. Some people are more popular than God. Because they are people who follow crowd. Mm -hmm. Crowd. They pull crowd. We don't pull crowd. God pulls us. Amen. Yeah, to himself. He pulls us. Very important. Now, why do you think some people do not need to repent? When the Bible says, if you say you do not sin, you lie. First John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. And first John chapter 3, verses 6 to 9. He says, if 
you continue to sin. You don't have the seed of God. Which means, we don't continue to sin. Not that we don't sin. We're Christians. Are you getting me? Yes. Not that we don't sin. We don't continue in sin. 1 John 3, 6. 1 John 3, 9. We don't continue. But we sin. Anybody who's, you know, I was preaching recently and I said, be very careful not to have a pontifex as your head of church. A very pompous person who says he does not sin. That's an antichrist. There's no human being that does not fall into sin. Right. It's God who pulls us out. Deliverance belongs to God. Hallelujah. Because some of you who have read the Bible and put your leg on hot water, you now think that you are Elijah of today. Please, let's stop our pomposity and our irrelevance spiritually. You're not spiritual because of what you wear and what you have. How is the anointing of God working in your life? What example are you setting for others to see Christ in, in you? And what concern do you have for Christ to be formed in others? People who have, repent, who have repented from their sins, they bear fruit of repentance. What is fruit of repentance? Stability with God. Mm. Maturity. Mm. Not looking at pettiness or dwelling in disputes. Some people preach disputable matters. There are churches who are preaching that you must wear scriptural signboard for you to be blessed. Some churches, they are preaching you must not eat crayfish in order for you to be healthy. You must not eat this or eat that. Don't eat chicken, you can eat egg. <laughs> who came first, chicken or egg? <laughs> How did egg come about? Who laid it? Don't eat okra. Those stupid messages are all over the places. And the devil is so happy that we are all repentant. Mm -hmm. Preaching controversial messages. Jesus preached repentance. John the Baptist preached it. Repent because in the kingdom of God, God is concerned about the repentant. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of God has now come when the spirit is now ruling you. It's you and the Holy Spirit. Do you know even if you, don't, you are not born again, the Holy Spirit convicts you. Yeah. Oh yes, it comes to your conscience to tell you the way you just looked at this person. Was it right? Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted to hug you, you push the person away. Because you think you are too much, the person will stay you. Not the clothes you wear. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Can you wear his iron and steel? <laughs> because you are wearing suit. You don't think somebody wearing jeans does not belong to God. Who told you the anointing comes from suit? Oh, I'm bad. Excuse me. You are wearing a suit and you are, a, you are an adulterer. Herod. You are wearing a suit and stealing Nigerian money and compromising the faith. Breaking election. Old man. What do you want the children to do? God wants us to repent. If we start repenting, it's a sign that we have humbled ourselves before our God. According to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God wants his people to humble themselves. And the beginning of that is repentance from what you know you are doing wrong and God hates. Because you know it. I know it. Why delights everybody in this repentance? Excuse me. There are two categories of sins we need to repent from. Number one, the sins we commit that clearly is known to us, God hates. Number two, the sins called dead works. Repent from sins, repent from dead works. What do I mean sins? Anything that, is, that upsets God is a sin. Anything that displeases God is a sin. Sin is a call to unholiness. And God is holy. So when you review your ways and you see it, that this you no know, match God, nobody should tell you. The solution is repent, not just confess. But to repent, you have to confess though. But re repentance does not stop at confession. It calls for a change. In what change to now outward action? And some repentance is required restitution. 
That is return what you took. So not all. So the spirit is one that will determine what to return. Mm -hmm. And what not to return. Because there are some things you want to return, they will shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> because you held it for too long. <laughs> Holy Spirit is the one that will help you in this area. And you need a leader, a good leader. I've helped many people here. And one of them is here today. I said, be very careful. Because if you return this thing, they will shoot you. <laughs> Let us, let's ask God how to go about returning it. In repentance, you don't follow another person's method. Yeah. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit will tell you. But the key to repentance is to make sure that you don't rely on your works to save you. Mm. You're not depending on your cleverness. Yeah. You are trusting God, whom you have seen is completely good. And you are not trusting yourself because it's so clear to you and to me that we are not good. Only God is good. Mm -hmm. On that basis, we repent. Cut the story short. Cut your suffering short. Yeah. Let's kill COVID-19. Let's repent. Yeah. From our ways. Yeah. Our sins are crying up to God. And God has come down to show us the distress that will make us repent. Mm -hmm. Call coronavirus. 19, because it started last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May not extend beyond this year in Jesus' name. Amen. May God give us the cure in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's wake up instead of trying to pretend. Some people, in their repentance, they come to man, but they don't go to God. And that with repentance is worldly. It's concerned about person. It's not concerned about God that you sin against primarily. Even when the prophet come, spoke the word that convicted David of sleeping with Bathsheba, he said, unto God and God alone have I sinned. Which means it's not unto the prophet. If you sin, it's not against me. Sometimes if I see you sinning, I will tell you well done. <laughs> yeah, because you are doing your persuasion. If I preach to you, I've told you everything, and you keep sinning, it is not my work to stop you. Yeah. It's God that will stop you. Either he kills you in judgment, or... He will wake you up at night. What have you been doing? <laughs> and if you are wise, you better go on your knees quickly. So I've heard about you. Now I've seen you. Like Job said, forgive me. <laughs> before I die. <laughs> People of us have met with God. So we don't need any person to be tell us again how terrible God can be in judgment. And <laughs> remember me. Oh, but also, dear, hear And remember me. It is repentance that gives us boldness and courage that God is with us. Nothing the devil can do against us. Hallelujah. If you don't repent from sin, you are afraid of even your shadow. Hey, you don't feel like they don't come. <laughs> See that. Repent. So everybody repents from sins. Everybody repents from dead works. Now, what is dead work? Dead work is anything you do that is not powered by God. Anything you, you, you do and the motive is not pure is a dead work. God will never power what he does not initiate. So when you start something, you are telling God to complete it. God will not put power there. You better complete it because he's offer and finisher. So that is a dead work. That's why you see, even physically, you find out some works fail because God did not start it. I'm telling somebody here who have been having abortion, who have been trying to have a child, by the authority of the word of God you are hearing, today is the end of your abortion. Amen. God, who is author and finisher of that faith, he is going to put into your womb the child he are destined to give to you. And that child, no matter how you jump, no matter how you pound him, no matter what you do as chores in the house, that child will not be aborted. Amen. God will complete everything he starts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how and why we stay away from dead works. Are you in dead works of a good idea you are running with, but it is not God-given? That's dead works. We depend from those works. So many people have even entered into ministry 
God did not call them, and they are calling God. So God is not answering because this person is a worldly messenger. He's not messenger of God. He doesn't have the word. God did not train this person. God has not sanctified this person's mind, not touched this person's heart, and he wants to touch others. People touch and touch emotionally, not by the Holy Ghost. God is saying, repent before I come to meet you myself. From your sin and your dead work. God, through the Holy Spirit, is telling you who to marry. But you are neglecting that person. You marry who you chose. And when you start having problems, you are giving prayer assignment to the church. We shall pray it. Yes. No, no, don't give us assignment. Don't wear us out. We follow the Holy Spirit. The church established the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And the church governs the Holy Spirit. Even now, he governs the Holy Spirit in the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop giving us assignment, government of this world, that we should pray COVID-19 to go. Why are you closing church and telling us to pray at home? Are you all right? That's right. Are you all right? Who do you think you are? Right. Repent now. God is coming for sure. In every church, there are people that are just there for their own selfish motive. It's time to repent from things that are wrong motive. You are just there to take from the church. You don't give. You don't give. Every time, even COVID-19 are not giving you opportunity. There's no money. They're exactly from job. When there was money, were you giving? Were you not just receiving? Are you not ashamed of yourself? People have repented. They produce fruit of repentance. They give. Because they know God commands it. It's not a debate. Hallelujah. When you love God, you love people, you give. You give your money, you give your time, and most importantly, you give your life for others to be saved. You become an agent of salvation. Some of us repent from sins, but you don't repent from dead works. Mm. Even beyond wrong motives, which I call dead work. Don't you know there is wrong timing? We need to repent from wrong timing. What God wants to do, you did it before time. You repent to. Do you remember when Moses was punished for this? He got wind that he was going to be a deliverer, that God will use him to remove Israel from the bondage of Egypt. He started killing people. He killed one. When he wanted to kill the other, he didn't know they have seen him. Do you want to kill me like you kill the other Egyptian you that you can take off? <laughs> There are some of you that God has caught you in the money you embezzled in Nigeria, you politicians. Mm -hmm. All the money that you embezzled and you put Nigeria, you put the masses, people have retired not to have money, they are dying early, their sins are on your head, mm -hmm. you politician. All those wicked people, you politician, that you have hired to be killing people because you want to be governor of a state, you want to be local government chairman, and you have hired people. And the people you hired, your son is not there. You are make useless, making useless the people that Jesus died for. You fight God for them to be killing your enemies. And then you send your son, your son to school abroad. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son will die abroad, and God will convert the people you are using to assassinate others. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is not asleep. He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Repent, you wicked soul. We came from wrong, we pay from wrong timing. It's not time to do something. You don't jump into it. That's how you jump out. At the easiest time, you don't jump out. Why? You have not trained enough. Repent from wrong, wrong procedure. Wrong procedure. When Nigerian, you are going to Cameroon to have visa to go abroad. You are traveling to Jamaica before you get passport and visa to go abroad. If God wants to send you abroad, can he not take you from Nigeria? Who can block God at any embassy? Come and listen to my testimony and understand that I did not, I did not feel any form to get the visa to UK and to America. When God wanted me to go, who can block him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wrong procedure. Why should God defend you in the place you went on your own power? 
That's why some people end up being mortuary attendants abroad. God is sending them there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are bearing John here, and your name is Barnabas there. Repent. Especially again when you are with wrong people. Wrong motives, wrong timing. Wrong people. Who are wrong people? The people you chose to be members of your ministry, not the people God called and gave grace to, to help your ministry. You chose them. Ah, come, my brother. I want you to be the treasurer of this ministry. I had a relative that told me that he would like to be the treasurer of this church. I said, I've always known you are a thief. And I will not pretend I don't know that there is no makers. You see me like Mumu? Do I look like Ranot? Or I resemble Musa? My friend, get out. I frustrated many people who knew me before because they thought that there is something they can gain from me. Everything that will be gained from me, God has gained. Mm -hmm. And only the people God say I will be blessed, I will be a blessing to. There's nothing I can do by myself. Hallelujah. The earlier you know that, the better the blessing of your repentance. Hallelujah. I stop blaming me. Let nobody blame you for what you did that God said you should do. Mm -hmm. You are with the wrong people. So what will you get? Wrong advice. And what are the wrong advices? The advices that don't let you repent. They will, they, will, they will be pumping you up. I will try. God is not that wicked. Mm. Oh, we shall see. Whether the God who told all the Canaanites of Vamus from their land for Israel, whether he has changed. Mm. We shall see. Repent in this COVID-19, before we enter post-COVID-19, when solution will come. This phase is an opportunity. COVID-19 is an opportunity for people to start repenting of their ways instead of just confessing their sins. Mm. 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 Let me give you a good two illustrations of repentance. Number one, Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. The church has saw this. The church has saw this. They were unrepentant. You know what God said about them? He said they had a reputation of being alive but they were dead. He now told them to repent of what is left so that they can be his. Are you a Christian or you are a leader of a church and you don't preach repentance? You are the number one person that is guilty in that church. We saw this church, unrepentant church. They have a reputation of being alive, but God says they are dead. An unrepentant person is a dead person, it's a walking corpse. When the judge justify your sin, you are making God wrong. <laughs> you don't have to say it. God has said it in your attitude. God has said it in our hearts. People know you to be very nice, and God says you are a bastard, illegitimate. I don't know you. That's what we are talking about. Hmm. You look nice before men, your reputation of being, of being alive, alive. Because you are dead. Because I have seen your sins working against you. Finally, the prodigal son. Very powerful story. Do you know who narrated that story? It was Jesus himself. Which means, in this story, there are three sons. I've always said two. Just discovered there are three. One, the perfect son that narrated it. Two, who he exposed the prodigal son, who instead of letting the father be in charge of his financial situation and every situation of his life, he asked for his money and went to spend. And you know what I love about that guy? The Bible says that he came to his senses after distress. I told you, like COVID 19. You will not see genuine Christians after COVID-19. Yes. Yeah, because when you have seen your father die, yes. your mother nearly escaped. He just narrowly escaped. 
and you've lost brothers and sisters in COVID-19, no person will tell you for you to repent because you, the next victim will be you. you. The man discovered that in the pig pen where he was working, he was eating with pigs, the worst animal to choose. Then he came to his senses in that suffering. How many of my father's servants are enjoying life? Then he practiced his repentance. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to tell my father, I'm not wanting to be a son. Just make me a servant. Mm -hmm. I, that story is one of the most fascinating stories in the Bible to me. He didn't joke with his repentance. He practiced it. He did the answer. <laughs> when my father says this, I will say this. That he actually came back. You know what he asked the father? He did not come back as a son. He said, I'm coming back as a servant. Employ me. Then the third son, where I close, I call him the pompous son. Jesus, the perfect son. Mm -hmm. The second one, prodigal son. And the pompous son, three peace. Which one you belong? Mm -hmm. The pompous son, he came back and the servant said, your brother. Meanwhile, the guy came back as a servant. You see that? He said, your brother went out, who left since, has come back, and your father is throwing party. He missed that he has repented. Mm. Yeah. Which is the most significant reason for coming home. Mm. That's why some people are looking at, look at you, cultists, maybe you were a pirate. Are you not a pirate? I'm not a pirate. I was, yes, I've left. Hallelujah. And I don't have to tell you my repentance because I'm between me and God. If you want to see, check my fruit. My character will let you know. I don't belong there again. I don't sleep with people's wives. I don't steal, not even church money. I'm not even in treasury. Even the buildings we have had for 25 years, they don't belong to me. They belong to Jesus Christ. If anybody drags it, he drags it at the cost of his firstborn or at his own life and generation. But he shape his leg. But if he bless his leg, I put it because that place belongs to Jesus. I'm dead serious about the relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's not a joke. Hallelujah. 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 It's not a place where I die, my son can't take the place in my property. I'm not doing OA Lawa business here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm planting the kingdom of God in the heart of God's people. Hallelujah. With unforgettable praise to God that deserves this big praise. You know what the poor son said? He went to his father. He said, I've been slaving after you. He didn't even celebrate me with a good. And this son of yours, he didn't say this brother of mine. Yeah. Mm. That is the language of your repentance. Mm. They tear others down. I was so disturbed watching football match of Chelsea and Norwich yesterday when I saw Giroud push uh, one of us, this uh, center half guy, Giorgino. When he scored a goal, that one wanted to celebrate with me. He pushed him. They better investigate that they are not the one dividing the club and making them not do well. How do you know a pompous child and not pointing to the perfect son who make people sons or the perfect brother? They are always complaining of the blessing that is given to their other brothers. They don't rejoice when they score goals. They wish they were the ones who scored the goals. That's the division we are having in the kingdom of God now. Unrepentant people waking up jealousy, waking up evil, and tearing the kingdom of God down. In the name of Jesus Christ, repent! You cannot deny that you didn't hear this message. <laughs> Father, back your word. Amen. Come into action. Pour out your spirit to your people. Amen. Every one of us, from me, the preacher, to those who heard, let your blessing of your presence, let it begin to walk out your way. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let pretense begin to die in your kingdom. Amen. Let jealousy begin to die in your kingdom. Amen. Let us be united with you from the heart to honor you because you deserve it. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let that married man repent instead of enslaving the wife. Yes. 
Let that married woman repent instead of disrespecting the husband. Amen. Let all our children know how to honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Deliver us, Almighty God, from this evil that is a plague in our midst because of our own repentance. Yes. Help us out, Jehovah. Help us out. Our trust is in you. You are the God of good news. We shall obey this good news of repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have a spiritual kingdom, not a physical kingdom. Let there be understanding of this. Amen. All hearts, we just pray you pay attention to your God. Amen. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Lord. for giving us this powerful message. Yes, there shall not be sorrow again. Yes. I prophesy abundance into somebody's life here. Amen. Enough of sorrow, yes, enough of weeping, yes, enough of sicknesses, Amen. enough of abortion. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of our Lord and our God. Hallelujah. In all ages. Hallelujah. We repent from our sins, Heavenly Father. Yes. We repent from every dead works, yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. Yes, Lord. In appreciation of you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. of God is going to convict you because I'm not the spirit of God, I'm a messenger of God. In whatever way he convicts you, I just have given you knowledge that he loves you. He's a producer of love. It's a very wonderful, gentle spirit, so considerate. Don't let guilt stand. Don't let condemnation stand. Stand in his grace and do what he says. Repent from what you are doing wrong. You don't have to feel him. He's with you. That's who God gave to us so the kingdom of God has come because the spirit of God has been poured into our hearts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's obey him. Let's follow him. Let's stop making excuses for sin. You don't need to tell people. People will see your change when it is genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, people will know you have changed. You are not who you used to be. This is not a physical change, not a cosmetic change. I mean real change, true change. Change is constant in the life of everybody. God yeah. wants that change. He wants good change for you. And in Jesus' name, the next time I'm preaching to you, I'll be preaching to people that have been upgraded in grace. Amen. People whose disgraces have been cancelled. Whatever the devil intended, the Lord had turned it around for your good. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For listening to this message. Amen. If you are hearing me for the first time, my name is Pastor Peter Uwaru of Cornerstone Adventure Church of Christ. And um, if you have been hearing, you have seen me a couple of times, please you want to know more about the church, check us out on the pages of uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. YouTube, please. We love you. I love you. I look forward to meeting you better in the assembly as God wants you to be. Amen. So we pray that our government will not be deaf and dumb. Amen. Uh, we shall hear Amen. and listen to God. Amen. 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 Okay, on Sunday, I will still be on same time by 10 a.m. And uh, please, we want people to subscribe to our YouTube uh, page. page, please. It doesn't cost anything. Please do so. God bless you. See you again on Sunday. <laughs> Not Monday. Got my mind made up, and I 